This is going to be the most comprehensive video on how to use ChatGPT to learn robotics and artificial intelligence. In this video, I'll be giving you 10 specific tips on how to use ChatGPT to learn robotics, computer vision or machine learning. And if you stick till the end, I'll also be giving you an additional bonus tip which will particularly help you become a professional robotics software engineer, computer vision or machine learning engineer. I'll start first by talking about what ChatGPT actually is and then I'll go on to talk about the core of the video which is how to use ChatGPT to learn robotics, computer vision and machine learning. I'll give you the 10 tips on how to actually use ChatGPT for your particular goals and if you stick till the end, I also have an additional bonus tip, an 11th tip for you that will be very important for you if you want to actually work professionally in these fields. After that, I'll also talk about whether or not I think ChatGPT would replace programmers in the future. So what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a large language model released by OpenAI for the specific purposes of becoming a personal assistant and in particular a chatbot. That's right, it's an artificial intelligence chatbot that is built upon GPT-3 but specifically gives output in the form of text data. You can try it at chat.openai.com. So tip number one, the best way to learn robotics, computer vision and machine learning is by taking up projects. And but for taking up projects, you also probably need to find the right relevant resources, the right relevant concepts on the internet as there is a lot of content on the internet and actually ChatGPT can help you filter out the best resources for your particular use case. So if you're doing a project, maybe you're looking for some tutorials on YouTube and there's a lot of tutorials and ChatGPT can actually save you some time in finding and testing out the right uh, tutorials on the internet and just quickly give you the most popular tutorials online. It could also help you find some good quality courses on computer vision, machine learning or robotics. It could help you filter out and find research papers specific to your topic of interest. So if you're interested in a topic of natural language processing and specifically the ones that use reinforcement learning for fine tuning the large language models, you could specifically give it that prompt and it would give you research papers on that particular sub niche in natural language processing. So this would help you find the right relevant research papers and also the right relevant books in artificial intelligence, let's say. You can also ask it to find the right GitHub repositories for a particular project problem that you're working on. I first asked ChatGPT to generate a list of top 10 machine learning courses for beginners and also link the courses, provide a link to these courses and it did that for me and uh, the first thing that it provided was the machine learning course on Coursera by Andrew Ng which is the most popular machine learning course and adopted by most of the students who want to start learning machine learning and then it also gave me some links to edX, Udemy courses, Udacity and some courses from the universities, the University of Michigan Fast AI's practical deep learning for coders, Google's machine learning crash course, and a few more Udemy and Plural site courses. So this was particularly helpful. Then I also asked it to provide me with the best five YouTube channels for learning computer vision in a project-based manner. And also provide a list to their most popular video, the most popular video on each of the channels. And it started by providing me with a list containing PyImage search, Sendex, artificial intelligence and data and deep learning for computer vision, Learn OpenCV and AI Adventures. So some of these channels I was not really aware of as well. But PyImage search, Sendex, these are the most popular channels. And this is overall a very good response. And you can check out these 
YouTube links and these links for the most part work. In some cases, I noticed that the YouTube links provided by ChatGPT did not work, but for this particular answer, all of the links were working and linked to actual YouTube tutorials and YouTube channels. And then I wanted to test out a very specific use case where I pretended to learn natural language processing and I expressed my interest in learning how chat GPT and large language models work and I wanted to see if it could provide me with a list of research papers that I can start reading as an absolute beginner with no knowledge in natural language processing to get a foundation in NLP and contribute to research in large language models. And the response was also pretty impressive. It started with the basic transformer paper titled Attention is All You Need. And it started and it also continued with giving me more and more research papers, including GPT-3, Generative Pre-Training, Transformers 3. A, a few of the research papers were repetitive here. But for the most part, the answer was pretty reasonable. And this is something that is definitely a time saver when uh, someone wants to research a new topic in which they do not have any knowledge in. So this is a particularly good use case for chat GPT. And then I also asked it to provide some GitHub repositories that use NLP to build chatbots. And I specifically gave prompts like easy to follow and well documented so that it is it's so that it only provides me with beginner friendly repositories. And I was surprised to see that it also gave me a list of actual GitHub repositories. Now some of these links may or may not work for the most part. All of the links that they provided were working except a few cases. But uh, what it is really good at is generating lists of topics in a particular domain and that can be then used to save time doing Google research by yourself. So it can be used as a personal assistant for this matter. Tip number two is actually to ask it to help you identify your niche. You can actually use it as a personalized career coach for you and you could give it prompts in the form of your personal interests, your personal areas of expertise, the kind of projects that you have done and so on and it would actually give you a way to find out help you find out your niche and you can the way you can do it is by actually also asking it to find the several subdomains in robotics several subdomains in artificial intelligence what are the different projects in these subdomains and following a systematic way to help you find out your niche your own subdomain of interest in this vast domain of robotics and artificial intelligence i first started by asking ChatGPT about the 10, 10 major subfields in robotics and it gave me a broad list of the topics in robotics. And then I asked it about the subfields in artificial intelligence and it provided me with machine learning, NLP, expert systems, fuzzy logic, robotics, neural networks and reinforcement learning. And then I asked it to choose a subfield from all of the subdomains of robotics and artificial intelligence. And it gave me a few factors that one could consider to find their niche or subdomain of interest. Your academic background and relevant skills, career goals and interests, job market demand and growth, personal strengths and weakness. So I thought this was a bit too generic of a response. And then I continued to ask it for a very specific step by step process that I can use to find my niche. So the response was to research both fields and subfields, which is, I think, a good starting point, which is also why I asked it for, I asked it to provide a list of subfields in robotics and AI and then assessment of your skills and interests. This is also something that I talk about in my videos that you have to identify your skill level and then cultivate new skills based on the topics that you're interested in and the topics that are in demand in the industry. So you have to explore career opportunities, talk to experts in the field, okay, and uh, gain hands-on experience, reflect and evaluate. If you want to become a robotic software, computer vision or machine learning engineer, the number one skill that you need to learn is that of programming. You need to learn Python, 
C++, maybe also MATLAB depending on which direction you want to go in and a lot of other programming related skills and tools. I've talked in more detail how to find the right programming related skills for your particular use case in a separate video called top skills for robotics, computer vision and machine learning or something of that sort. So if you're looking for a more comprehensive breakdown on the top skills in these fields, you can check out that video. And once you're clear on which skills you want to primarily focus on, you can then ask ChatGPT to find the best resources for Python or C++ or whichever programming language you choose. As a beginner, I always encourage you to just start with Python, stick with it for a very long time, actually become very comfortable with programming and then if you need to, you can switch to C++ for low level problems in robotics. So ChatGPT can actually help you find the best resources to learn Python, for example. It can help you find links to YouTube tutorials or articles online or any other resources that will help you learn Python as an absolute beginner. Not only that, it will help you actually build a roadmap for learning Python as an absolute beginner. It would give you a step-by-step -step procedure you can follow without any background programming experience to start learning Python and also start building some basic Python projects. And you can ask it to list down some beginner friendly Python projects. And then I gave it a case study asking it to provide me with some ways of how to start learning Python as a beginner with no prior programming experience. And I asked it to provide me with a step-by-step -step process that can be followed. So what it did was interesting. It provided me with an actual sequence that any beginner can follow from scratch. So installing Python with a link to its official website, starting with basics such as variable, data types, control structures, functions, and loops. Practice writing code, getting familiar with idle, study the standard library, learning a framework for, for Python such as Django and Flask, joining a community, keep practicing. Overall, I think the response was pretty generic. And what I liked was that an emphasis on learning via projects and practicing and taking participating in coding challenges was laid. So this is not a bad tip, although a bit too generic, but this is something that can be definitely followed as a beginner who wants to learn Python. And then I became more specific and I asked it to provide me with a list of some beginner friendly projects to get some hands on practical experience since it laid so much emphasis on building projects and I specifically asked it to suggest me with five specific projects. So a basic calculator, guessing the number game, hangman game, tic-tac-toe, text-based adventure game. So I think these are some basic project ideas that it came up with and I think even if you randomly take up a project idea and start building it, it would be a very good way to learn Python and also add a simple project to your portfolio and then progressively start increasing the difficulty of projects and take up more and more projects. So then I took up one specific project that of a basic calculator and I asked it what specific steps one needs to follow to build this project and it gave me a response that was very specific to this particular case, defining functions for basic mathematical uh, operations, accepting user input, defining if else loops uh, to perform the operation, calling the appropriate function, printing the results and handling exceptions. So this is absolutely accurate in the way it solves. And what it also gave me was a sample code that uh, I could use to just start doing it. What I would recommend though is that you don't look at the code even though ChatGPT is very good at generating these basic programming uh, codes and scripts. But what I would encourage is that you could look at the steps but try to code it by yourself and then you can get back to watching the script and comparing it with your own version. The number one tool or framework that is used by roboticists in the software domain is that of ROS or robot operating system and the way that you can start 
using chat gpt to learn ross is by asking it to find the right resources similar to the one that i mentioned in python for python and also asking it for the right tutorials to follow as an absolute beginner because there is a lot of youtube channels that you can follow for ross tutorials but as a beginner you want to quickly find the simplest and the easiest to follow tutorial and that is a way you can use chat gpt of course you would still need to test out a few resources watch a few videos and maybe you won't find the perfect simplistic video on the first go but at least chat gpt can help you list down and filter some of the simple tutorials or topics on for ross it would help you understand the ross framework how it is structured overall and how its modularity and other features can actually be of advantage in building an interdisciplinary robotics project it can help you find beginner friendly ross projects and i have emphasized upon this a lot of times that the best way to learn ross is by taking up lots and lots of projects and projects of progressively increasing difficulty so you start with a simple project and then you progressively increase the difficulty and then you take up more and more complex projects and that's how you become a really good ross developer so i first started with asking what ross actually is and how is it useful in the industry it gave me a generic definition of what ross is and that it provides a set of tools and libraries for building and deploying robotic applications it is used in the industry for several reasons modularity interoperability community robustness and i think these are good responses and this would something this would serve as something that would save you a lot of time if you just want to get started with learning ross and you don't need to spend a lot of time google searching reading books on ross i think if you have just this little understanding you can then ask it how to use ross and this is what i started doing already i asked it to list some ross books that i can follow that use a project based learning framework and are specifically targeted towards beginners and also mention what are the best ways to learn ross and it talked about some of the books it gave me a list of some of the books a few of these are from lendin joseph who i also highly recommend in addition to these books there are several other books to learn so several other ways to learn ross online tutorials and videos online courses ross workshops and ross communities regardless of which way you follow um the fact is that you have to start learning and building projects by yourself and then you can refer to tutorials as solutions so this is a particularly good response it's not bad at all and then since ross has some fundamental concepts that are different from other frameworks so i asked it to give me a short overview of the most fundamental concepts in ross and a little demonstration on how to actually use it so let's see what it generates so it talks about nodes topics services messages which are the fundamental concepts in ross this is how uh, the ross framework is structured it talks about ross parameters and transform and also gazebo as a simulator platform that is integrated with use that can be used uh, with ross and is most widely used so it also gave me a demonstration on how to use ross first by installing a ross creating a ross workspace creating a package and then building the package launching a node and starting communicating so all of these responses are actually in my view pretty good and are sufficient to get started with learning ross take a very simplistic project as a, as a case study to explain the ross fundamental concepts to me so i think in this case what is very important is the kind of prompts that you use i use the term simplistic project case study and to explain the ross fundamental concepts uh, very strategically so that it gives me a list it gives me a case study uh, that would help me understand these concepts but also a very simple case study dealing with a simple project
So it repeated some of the things from the previous messages, uh, like creating a workspace, creating a package, writing the publisher node, writing the subscriber node. So it is actually already talking about a particular project uh, where you have to subscribe to a particular message published by another node. I think, and uh, then you launch the nodes, observe the messages. This example demonstrates the basic concepts of ROS nodes, topics, messages, and publish, subscribe communication model, which is an absolutely fundamental concept of ROS. By building this simple project, you will get an overview of how to create and launch ROS nodes, how to publish and subscribe to topics. So I think it's, it's a pretty good response. Then I pushed it a bit further and asked it to generate a Python script for this project and explain each step. And it did that. Here's a Python script for the publisher node. So initializing the node, creating a publisher object, then continuing the steps further. And likewise, it did it for the subscriber node. Now, what would be also important is that you don't just copy and paste this script, although these scripts would work because this is a simpler use case and most of the simple Python scripts that chatbot creates, you can just use it directly for the most part. There might be a few errors here and there, but for the most part, the scripts would work. What you should do is write the script for yourself and then actually compare it with the explanation, with the script that it gave it to you. And you can also ask it to explain some of the concepts, some of the lines that you might not be familiar with and how that works, the syntax of some particular functions and stuff like that. So it also gave me with the gave me a step-by-step -step explanation of the code, import the required packages, initialize the node using rospy.init node, create the publisher subscriber object, rospy.publisher rospy.subscriber, publish messages, callback function, start the node. And this is pretty much it. Everyone has different goals. Everyone has different career aspirations. Everyone wants to master a very different subdomain in robotics and artificial intelligence. Everyone is probably interested in something very different, some very specific subdomain in each of these fields. And so what you need is to have a personalized roadmap to start learning these fields. And ChatGPT can actually help you define a personalized roadmap for yourself. And the best part about ChatGPT is that it can remember the prompts that, it give, that you give to it. That means that it remembers the history of the chat that you perform with ChatGPT and it remembers your learning preferences. It remembers the interests that you shared with it and it continues chatting with you based on the prompts and the memory of you that it has. That means if you give it enough information, it could actually build a personalized roadmap based on your own specific goals and interests for you. It could also be used to make a very specific yearly, monthly and weekly plan for you specific to your goals, to where you are based, to what your interests are, to what fields you are really passionate about and everything specific to your particular case. It can help you also plan projects from scratch without any prior experience in robotics, machine learning or computer vision. It can also give you what specific habits you should be having, how, many, how much you should be programming on a weekly, monthly basis to complete a particular project. Of course, it would not be perfect, but it would get, it could give you a rough estimate and that would be sufficient for you to create an initial learning plan for yourself and overcome that initial barrier. I moved on to provide it with a specific case study of a student studying bachelors in computer science and whose goal is to actually become a computer vision engineer. And I wanted to see if it could provide a very personalized roadmap for this particular student that can be followed to become a professional computer vision software engineer. And I mentioned terms like before graduating and I also mentioned terms like a project-based framework for one, one year. So I, I try to keep things as specific as possible here. So it, it gave me a generic response 
which is not bad at all get a solid foundation in computer vision fundamentals study computer vision concepts such as image processing object detection familiarize yourself with programming languages and libraries build your portfolio with small projects what my personal view is that you don't need to spend a lot of time familiarizing yourself with the fundamentals if you know a little bit of open cv python and you're familiar with programming you could just start taking up a project immediately and then you learn these concepts the fundamental computer vision concepts along the way in this way you use the concepts that you learn in an actual project and you build a portfolio along the way while you're learning participate in computer vision hackathons or kaggle challenges again very good points and all of these points are very helpful but it's still a bit generic and uh, there's no clear roadmap or or a step by step process that can be followed for example there's no reason why you cannot do kaggle challenges before you do some small projects or before you learn some theoretical concepts so in that sense, in that sense it's a bit generic but it's not too bad and I asked it that and I told it that it's a bit generic and can you help me define a yearly, monthly and weekly goal based on this roadmap and uh, based on my personal long term career goal which I mentioned is to become a computer vision software engineer. So yearly goals, study computer vision fundamentals, build a portfolio, all these things. Monthly goals dedicate at least 20 hours per week. So here it became more specific work on one small computer vision project participate in one computer vision hackathon or kaggle challenge study two to three chapters these are all goals that you can set for each month like one deep learning project using tensorflow for a month and then dedicating 20 hours per week initially i think that's a good um, that's a good uh, practice oriented uh, habit that you can build and you can set it as a goal that you would want to just work on studying 20 hours per week on computer vision concepts so i think it's not too bad and then it also gave me weekly goals study to four to five computer vision concepts which can be definitely done in a week and then spend two to three hours working on personal computer vision project of course uh, all of these goals are meant to be for separate weeks i think still i thought it was a bit too vague and i uh, wanted a more clear systematic roadmap so i asked it to give me a plan for each month separately from january till december and it did and i mentioned something about smart goals in as a prompt but it messed it up in the sense that it gave me specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound goals but separate goals in each of these categories so a separate specific goals study computer vision fundamentals and get a solid understanding of the core concepts measurable read at least three chapters of the book but these are not combined what i was looking for was an actual uh, one specific goal for each month so one goal for january and not one specific goal one measurable goal one accountable goal and so on so i would just wanted one goal and as I then tried to get that response from it and here it what I did was I asked it to give me a plan for each month separately from January till December make the goals smart I still continued with that prompt and I set one goal for each month but somehow it didn't really understand that so I removed the statement set the goal smart and set one smart goal which is a bit more specific so you see here it gave me one smart goal for each month it started generating me that and also weekly goals corresponding to that monthly goal so i think this is exactly what i was looking for and the way you use chat gpt is by giving it specific prompts and it uh, prompt engineering is uh, very very important so if you give it the wrong prompts of course the response would not be very good so this is to show you that you have to be smart about using chat gpt and giving it the right prompt so that it gives you the right responses that you can use it to learn robotics computer vision and machine learning efficiently 
I was pretty satisfied with this uh, particular response that it gave me and then I asked it to continue because it, it stopped. I think there is a word limit. Uh, there's a limit to the number of words it displays at a, as as a, as one particular answer. So it went on to continue uh, with giving me the responses from June till December. And let's look at one specific goal. So for one for September, the goal is to attend at least two computer vision conferences or workshops and write a summary of the events at the end by the end of September. This is pretty specific. And uh, the weekly breakdown of this is research and choose the conference or workshops, attend the first event, attend the second event, write a summary of the events and share with the study group. Of course, these depend on the dates of the conferences, but overall, I think it's not too bad. And uh, you can, of course, refine the goals based on your particular uh, interests. Some of these goals might not be relevant to you. Uh, but I think it's a pretty good roadmap. Uh, another one for November is implement a computer vision project using PyTorch by the end of November. Okay, pretty reasonable and specific. Choose a project and start implementation one week. Uh, continue working on the project. Start adding deep learning components to the project. Finish the project and review the implementation. I think it's a bit generic, but it's not too bad. And you can, if you have this structure, you can update the content of these uh, goals. Tip number six is that it can help you ideate project lists. So it can, uh, so you can ask it to find the top robotics projects for beginners. You can ask it to find raw specific projects. You can ask it to find simple TensorFlow or PyTorch based projects. You can ask it to find projects in a particular industry or of a particular category, let's say mobile robots, and it could list you down 10 to 20 or more specific projects that you can just start using to learn robotics, computer vision or machine learning. It can also give you skill tailored projects. So if you ask it that, hey, I want to build five projects that use Python, TensorFlow and OpenCV, and projects that are of an increasing difficulty, of an ascending order of difficulty, then it would list down five to 10 different projects, starting with the simplest project and ending with the most complex project that uses Python TensorFlow and OpenCV. So that is a really cool part of ChatGPT. I was pretty satisfied with the previous response where it gave me a proper yearly, monthly and weekly roadmap and a plan to start learning computer vision and then I, I'm asking it to generate a list of five computer vision projects that are beginner friendly and do not require a lot of computational resources and arrange the projects in ascending order of difficulty, be as specific as possible and also give links to relevant GitHub repositories and research papers for each project. So I made it as specific and as detailed as I could have and it started by first talking about image classification. It mentioned a little bit about uh, the difficulty level. It gave a short description. It mentioned get the GitHub repository and it linked a few image classification research papers, which were also working. So these are working links that one can directly use object detection, image segmentation, and the GitHub repositories and research papers corresponding to that, and then image restoration and visual question answering. So give me a list of robotics projects that can be done in simulation and do not require buying a robotics kit, Arduino, or any additional hardware and can be done at home. I want to learn Python, Gazebo, and ROS, so the projects should use these. So I'm very specific about the skills that I want to learn by means of these projects. So let's see how the response would be. I also asked it to link relevant YouTube tutorials for each project so that I have some resources that I can use to build these projects. And it talked about TurtleBot simulation. It gave me a link to the YouTube tutorial. And navigation simulation, manipulation simulation. I think the list is a bit generic, 
but it's not too bad uh, so for example for the manipulation simulation learn how to simulate robotic simulators and control them using ROS learn how to create a mobile robot in gazebo and control it using ROS okay so uh, these are just these are projects that would help you be familiar with all of these different uh, areas in robotics so manipulation mobile robots perception navigation and stuff like that so what i was curious was that uh, the resources the links that it provided to the youtube channels were they really working or not because chat gpt is trained on the internet resources uh, only till 2021 so maybe some of these youtube videos might not work but what i was surprised to see that especially for this particular answer for other answers i think most of the resources most of the links that it shared were working but for this answer for some reason none of the resources were working so i then went on to check the research paper links and uh, the github repository links and some of the github repository links were not working but most of the research papers were working and most of the github repositories were also working so it really depends and then i went on to check some of the other resources and the conclusion was that the youtube links did not work and i told it that the youtube links do not work update the links to be working links use links to alternate articles books or courses if the youtube links are not available and it updated it and as i saw the youtube links were still not working so in some cases chat gpt is not really entirely reliable but the answer is still not too bad if i think about it that it gave, gave me the list of list of some general projects that can be tried upon a little description of it and if and the youtube resources can also be searched uh, on our own actually so this was not too bad uh, but what i wanted was some specific working resources and this was not very helpful so i thought maybe youtube links are not updated or since it's a large language model the thing could be that it, it is designed to gen generate responses that look real and might not be very accurate although the creators of chat gpt have mentioned that they're trying to make the model as accurate as possible so they're working on it but i asked it to replace the youtube links with github repositories and a few of the re repositories were working actually most of the repositories were working but i noticed that these were just generic repositories that follow the uh, ross planning official uh, libraries the official repositories and so on so it was not very specific but it's not too bad of a response and then i asked it to provide a list of beginner friendly projects again that do not require any hardware and can be done from home that should use python and ross and these should be as specific as possible because what i realized was that the list uh, above was not too bad but it was a bit too generic and it gave me links to generic ross perception and navigation manipulation stacks so let's see if it is able to provide me with something specific. So turtle bot simulation, image processing using OpenCV and ROS, voice control for a robot using ROS and Python. I still think it's a bit too generic, but these could at least be used as a way to generate ideas for your project. So robot arm simulation and control using ROS and Python. Autonomous navigation of a robot in simulated environment. Actually, it's not too bad. I think I already see that uh, the projects are starting to be more specific here. So hand gesture recognition using ROS and Python. But uh, the fact is that uh, I asked it to provide me with links of resources that use some that use Python and C++. And what we notice here is that, of course, it has a uh, name of a project here but it's it just adds using ross and python so this might not be absolutely accurate it just uh, found a way to answer my question that is not wrong but that might not also be the best response so then i asked it to generate some computer vision projects and i also asked it to make the project name long because I wanted to provide me with some real specific projects and not some generic projects such as handwritten gesture recognition using ROS and Python. So let's see what it does. 
And I think this response is slightly better, at least object detection using the BLR Jones algorithm and Har cascade. So this is very specific, and I think this is not bad. Face detection and recognition using the OpenCV library in Python, and I think I'm not generally satisfied with the projects where it just uses the skill names uh, in a manner to make to make it seem very specific. So image segmentation using OpenCV and Python. What would have been more relevant was image segmentation for a specific application. And this is actually something you can play with. You can uh, you can try out different prompts, and the way you generate prompts is the way the response would be. So if you can ask it to generate image segmentation uh, projects for specific use cases, it would come up with a list. So it can definitely be used to generate project lists. Tip number seven, and probably the most interesting tip, is that you can actually define a complete project pipeline for yourself using chat GPT. You can ask it to give a layout or a plan, an overall pipeline for a project topic that you give to it. This way you can ask it to automate the entire machine learning workflow, starting from data preparation, data handling, to actually defining and building the model, to actually then training and evaluating the model. And maybe also deployment depending on what specific problem you're working on. You can ask it to specifically select machine learning models for the problem that you're working on. You can ask it to generate and compare multiple different pipelines and compare several approaches and select a particular pipeline for your specific use case. So this saves a lot of time because as a beginner who has no experience in machine learning projects, if you can just use chat GPT and the resources that are existing online to shorten the time to research the overall pipeline to build a machine learning project, then you would be able to learn things very, very quickly. Once a list of projects is generated that you are satisfied with, and of course, I'd encourage you to iterate more and try out different prompts till you're satisfied with the list of projects that it gives. And it is definitely capable of giving you very specific and detailed project lists. So once you have a list of projects that you're satisfied with, you can ask it to provide a pipeline on how to actually start building the project. So I asked it specifically to build a binary classifier for cat and dog classification using TensorFlow. What would the project pipeline look like? And it gave me a generic pipeline, data collection and preparation, model creation, model evaluation, prediction, eval deployment, model fine tuning. So some general steps that are used in machine learning. Create an alternative pipeline that you does not use deep learning and, and rather uses conventional computer vision. By the way, com conventional computer vision is not a good idea for a uh, cat dog classification problem because the feature extraction process can be very tricky in the sense that it's very complicated to identify to uh, extract uh, features that can then help us to classify cats and dogs and distinguish between them but let's see what the response would be so compare the two pipelines data collection and preparation feature extraction good so this is a good response because uh, in a conventional computer vision process feature extraction is a separate process and in deep learning feature extraction is done the features are captured in the weights of the neural network. Model creation, model evaluation, model prediction, and deployment. So repeating the same general steps again. Uh, but it mentions that uh, compared to the deep learning pipeline, the conventional CV pipeline is more limited in its ability to automate learning complex features from data, but it's simpler to implement and train. So I think this is pretty accurate. Comment on the feature extraction process of each pipeline and make a comparison based on three criteria. It does that and it makes a comparison based on automation, complexity, and accuracy. And it mentions that deep learning is more automated, but also more complex and can achieve high accuracy. In summary, deep learning is more automated, more complex, and can achieve higher accuracy, while conventional CV is less automated, simpler, and has lower accuracy. So I mentioned that complexity is not a criteria that I am considering. So based on the three comparison criteria, which pipeline 
do you recommend for my cat and dog classifier and it mentioned the deep learning pipeline instead of the conventional computer vision pipeline when you're building a project you probably also want to spend some time brainstorming and ideating conceptualizing several solutions to the particular problem and that is something chat gpt is really really good at because it is very good at giving you multiple ideas on a particular topic that is why it is used a lot in content creation already it is it's starting to be used in creating articles blogs and also generating general ideas to a specific topic or a problem so this is something that you can use to actually find multiple solutions to let's say a computer vision machine learning or robotics project and it will actually give you very good alternative solutions which you can then think about yourself and select the best solution for your particular problem the most practical solution the easy to build solution the most economically feasible and the most efficient solution for your particular use case and you can also give these terms and as prompts and ask chat gpt to actually make a comparison of different solutions to the particular problem and that would save you a ton of time when doing a project you can ask it to generate ideas on selecting machine learning models for a specific project and ask it to give a comparison of several machine learning models in the context of solving that particular problem for the cat and dog classifier the binary classification problem i asked it to generate 20 different solutions or approaches to solve that particular problem and take reference from research papers i wanted to make sure that the responses it generates is accurate and is not a hypothetical hypothetical scenario and I mentioned I'm brainstorming and want to generate as diverse solutions to the problem as possible. So it, it just gave me a very generic response, CNNs, SVMs, K nearest neighbors. It just basically listed down a list, uh, a lot of uh, machine learning methods and approaches and can be, can, it can serve as a good way to uh, brainstorm solutions to the problem. But essentially, it just gave me a list of uh, machine learning approaches. So then I asked it to compare all of these approaches uh, for the cat and dog classifier problem and provide me with the most, with the approach that is most widely used for its practicality and accuracy. And here, I think I could have been more specific and I could have mentioned other criteria for comparison, but I just mentioned practicality practical implementation and accuracy as the two criteria so i just wanted to see what the response would be and cnn based deep learning approaches was the one that it selected and it also mentioned that feature learning engineering feature feature engineering approaches such as hawk transform bag of words and so on are used for feature extraction and can be combined with uh, support vector machines k nearest neighbors but these are not as accurate as deep learning techniques but can still achieve good results in certain situations because I had mentioned accuracy as a primary criteria for the comparison. And it talked about other approaches and how they compare with deep learning. So overall, I think the response was not too bad. I could have taken a step back and asked it and prompted it further to generate more specific solutions. But this is something that you can uh, test it out for yourself. Tip number nine and also one of my most favorite tips is that you can ask it to explain fundamental concepts in mathematics, programming, machine learning, computer vision, basic robot kinematics and dynamics or basically any of the sub domains of robotics and artificial intelligence and it would give you a concise answer and you could ask it to give multiple examples in order to explain that particular concept. So that is very very powerful and you would be saving a lot of time trying to understand a concept online and this is particularly very well suited to the project based way of learning because while you're doing a project you can just immediately start doing the project without spending a lot of time understanding a lot of theory once you do the project and you don't know some of the theoretical concepts you can then quickly ask chat gpt to explain some of the concepts in very simple terms with examples with practical implications with how these concepts actually apply in the real world industrial projects and that way you'd be able to understand the concepts in context in the context of the problem that you're solving and also in a very practical interesting and 
multimodal way in the sense that you get multiple examples to uh, for a particular concept and that way you learn it really really well you can also ask it to generate summaries of research papers research papers are very hard to understand and you have to spend a lot of time and you could definitely use chat gpt to help you simplify the process at least to a certain extent at least slightly so that you can understand a research paper faster and in simpler words so chat gpt proposed to follow a convolution convolutional neural network based approach for the binary classification problem the cat and dog classifier and then i said i do not understand how cnns work could you explain it and this is one of the most useful use cases of chat gpt because it can explain concepts it can take up examples to explain the concepts and it can explain concepts in very simple words if we prompt it like that so it explains cnns and the building blocks of cnns convolution layers activation functions and pooling and so on and we could go on and ask it about each of the specific layers what the functions are and so on so it essentially serves as a as a virtual tutor because it, you could ask it a lot of different things and this is more efficient as compared to searching on google because in google maybe you try to find some of the resources read some articles watch a video and some of the explanations are not very good uh, and here if an explanation is not some is something that you do not understand you could push it further you could prompt it further and explain it things in more detail so here i wanted to see how it explains convolution in more detail and i specifically asked it to write three paragraphs and explain it completely from scratch so it did explain me how the element wise multiplication takes place how what the kernel is how how the convolution operation takes place and it was more detailed in this case for the specific convolution operation so overall it's not too bad and then i asked it to simplify it further and explain it to a 6 year old and its response was pretty interesting actually it it gave me an example uh, where it asked me to imagine a big puzzle a big puzzle with many pieces uh, and find all the pieces that look like a specific picture like a cat or dog to do this you have a small window that you can slide over each puzzle so it tries to explain the convolution sliding operation the convolution uh, operation in as simple words as possible so you could go ahead and pause this video if you want to read the response overall the response was not bad and uh, it it is targeted towards a 6 year old and how that this concept can be explained very very simply and tip number 10 is probably the most practical way to use chat gpt and that is to use it as a programming or a coding virtual assistant you can ask it to explain a particular code once you have written a particular code or you found a particular script on github that you want to understand that you are unable to understand from scratch you could ask it to explain the script to you step by step in a very simple way explaining each and every single term or expanding upon some of the terms or some of the lines of code that you don't really understand you can ask it to debug issues with code that you would be stuck with eventually if you are doing a lot lots of projects so you can you can just share the error message with chat gpt and it would give you potential solutions potential ways on how you can solve that particular error you can ask it to clean and organize a code you can share a python script with it and it will be able to organize and structure it better simplify it reduce the number of lines in the code or essentially just making proper indentation or following the clean code rules that are agreed upon in the programming industry you can ask it to also translate a code from c++ to python or from one specific programming language to another and essentially you can just ask it to do a lot of programming for you saving you a lot of time but this is something you should not be relying upon as a beginner because as a beginner the goal is to learn as much programming as you can and then once you are at a certain stage you can still you can then start using chat gpt to assist you on some of the simpler tasks which will save you time and then 
you could focus on more complicated problems. Now, a short disclaimer, there's something you should be doing once you have a foundational understanding and only when you are confident enough that you know the basics of machine learning, computer vision or whatever you're learning that you're confident enough with the basics and the use case is to use it as a personal coding assistant because some of the beginner problems, uh, initial data science or machine learning problems can be done pretty efficiently with chat GPT because it is capable of generating code solutions, programming solutions. So uh, don't use it as a crutch. Your goal is to learn computer vision, machine learning or robotics as a beginner and you should focus on learning and not just uh, generating solutions and showing that off. So I, I asked it to program a CNN from scratch. Can you share a basic script? using TensorFlow for cat and dog classification problem. And you should only do that. I'd like to repeat that once again. Once you have uh, tried to build this project on your own or you have built similar projects and you just want to save your time and uh, get a working implementation. And there might be mistakes in the implementation, but for the most part, the script that it offers is not too bad. So model definition, adding convolution layers, flattening it and defining activation function. So all of the basic things, uh, it, it does it decently enough. And then it also explains all of these things. And then I asked it to summarize the architecture of the model in table form. And it did that. Uh, and this was the first time I tried to ask it to provide a table. And it doesn't look bad, actually. What I noticed though was that in the table, um, the number of convolution layers is, is different from the code that it provided. So I was curious about that and uh, that is also pointing to the fact that it might not always be accurate. So you have to be smart about using chat GPT. That is the reason why I mentioned that you should only rely on chat GPT as a coding assistant, as a programming assistant once you have a sufficient level of foundational understanding so that you don't get fooled by the algorithm by by the responses actually and uh, yeah i was checking it there and i saw that there's just one convolution block there uh, but in the table there are four convolution blocks and uh, and it actually apologized for that in the code i provided an example of a single convolution block whereas in the table i described the architecture of a typical cnn and then I asked it to asked it how many convolution blocks are sufficient for binary classification. And the answer was pretty generic and that it depends. But it also mentioned that a common practice in deep learning is to start with a small number of convolution blocks and gradually increase them with while monitoring the performance on a validation set, which is a pretty good response. And then I also talked about I also asked it about uh, some of the foundational concepts dealing with this. So I asked it, why do the number of filters increase after each layer? And the response was also pretty satisfactory. It was a good response, actually. It said that the features become more and more complex, and that is why we would do that. Can you update the code to include five convolution blocks instead of one? And it did that in a very clumsy way. It just repeated the code. Uh, but the code would most likely work uh, and it, it generated four convolution blocks in this case. What I then asked it was to combine these uh, convolution blocks to a single function because this is not a very efficient way of writing code. And it did that, it defined a separate convolution block uh, with all of these, but notice that uh, all of the codes, there, there are differences in these codes. For some of the uh, scripts, there is no batch normalization. Uh, for others, there is. So, so you have to be smart about using this. There can be mistakes here, and it can be sometimes a bit too generic because it's a language model. It's not really a programming assistant. That being said, it, it does serve a role it is helpful and especially when you're debugging problems if you encounter some issues uh, then you can find solutions to the problem
so for example in this case i just uh, want to demonstrate that it can also uh, debug problems although it depends on the complexity of uh, the error that you have here it's a very simple error no module named keras and then it asks me to install keras you stayed till now so as promised i'll give you tip number 11 which is that you can use chat gpt to actually write motivation letters cover letters cvs and actually help you prepare for interviews it can write initial cvs for you it can write initial motivation letters for you of course there's something you cannot totally rely upon chat gpt for because you have to also make it very specific and custom to your particular needs but creating a motivation letter making a cv all of these things take up a lot of time and i really think the chat gpt can help us save a lot of time generating an initial draft and then of course you can you would still have to spend some time refining and making it more proper and suited to your particular use case so that is something the chat gpt can be used for as well and of course while preparing for an interview you'd also need to learn some technical concepts that the interviewer might ask so you can ask it to generate a list of popular questions that are asked in machine learning interviews or robotic software engineering position interviews and it will generate you comprehensive lists upon lists and you can again prompt it further to ask it to generate even more topics or more fundamental concepts that are asked industry you can also give it descriptions of a job opening and ask it to specifically generate technical interview questions that might be asked for that particular position and it could give you a lot of ideas of course this need not be a comprehensive list but it would be a huge time saver for you in terms of learning or and preparing for interviews you can also ask it to generate company specific human resource questions so if your company if the company that you're applying for was not founded after 2021 which is the time till which the chat gpt model is trained then you can also rely on chat gpt to give you information about the company its its products its vision mission and also what kind of company related questions you can expect in the interview you can ask it to describe your particular projects the particular projects that you have done previously and how to explain them properly in an interview and it would give you tips on how to do that as well you can ask it to find the right resources or projects that could help you fill gaps in knowledge for a particular position so what are the specific projects i can do in order to get my skills up to a certain level such that this particular job is then something that i'm comfortable applying for or how can i upskill my level such that i'm eligible for this particular job position so these are things that you can ask chat gpt and it is definitely a very valuable resource in terms of generating these kinds of content which are generally text based so here's the bonus use case for you. What I did was I actually took a position, a job position, and I pretended to apply for this particular position. I just copied and pasted this complete job description from Meta. And I told it a bit about uh, my work experience. I just took a hypothetical case of a person who has five years of experience in computer vision at Google and has a master's in computer science from Stanford University. Prepare my motivation letter for this position. Keep it within one page. Also, I have worked on object detection, semantic segmentation, and augmented reality. These are just prompts I uh, added so that it gives a very specific motivation letter because we all know that ChatGPT is notorious for providing very generic responses. But if we provide it with the right prompts, it, it does start to get more specific. And I mentioned that I published a research paper in the domain of augmented reality, write an, a hypothetical research paper name and mention it in the motivation letter. And the response was not bad at all. Uh, and of course, the disclaimer is that do not just blindly follow it as a motivation letter but it can save you a lot of time because once you have an initial motivation letter generated by this uh, language model you can you all you have to do is just refine it correct the facts and add some more specific details that might be missing 
So this saves a lot of time in my view and uh, because for creating a CV and motivation letter, all of these things take up a lot of time. And here the response is not too bad. Dear sir or madam, I'm writing to apply for the computer vision engineer position at the Facebook Reality Labs organization. I'm confident that my five years of experience in computer vision at Google combined with my master's degree makes me an ideal candidate for this role. I have a proven record and it mentioned more about skills, although for more personal skill related things, it is a good idea to actually read and reread it and update it to uh, highlight your strengths and how your projects might be more suitable for the position. I have also published a research paper and it mentioned a research paper because I asked it to mention a hypothetical research paper in this case. This paper titled uh, Real Time Augmented Reality with Deep Learning. Thank you for uh, consideration. Considering my application, I look forward to the opportunity to further discuss my qualifications with you. Not too bad, uh, can be more specific and then I asked it to, I update it to add more specific details about my personal project and how they link to the work at Facebook AI research, mention about my skills such as PyTorch, machine learning and Unity engine and how they would be an asset to the company also make the letter more formal, precise and detailed and you can Keep on refining this response, use ChatGPT uh, prompts to keep on refining the response and, and further save yourself some more time. And here it updated it and it made things more specific as I requested it to. And it updated the paragraph uh, talking about my experience at Google and more and more details. By the way, just to mention again, this is a hypothetical case study. I do not work at Google. So as you can see, ChatGPT is a really wonderful tool and it has a lot of different applications and can be of particular importance in terms of learning robotics, computer vision and machine learning for absolute beginners. So this is extremely important and this is why you might be wondering whether ChatGPT will replace human beings in terms of programming or not. Uh, we don't really know whether or not ChatGPT will actually replace programmers or not. But as we have seen in some of the tips that I shared, ChatGPT is able to generate accurate programming code codes for a lot of projects, at least for the simplistic ones. And this is just the beginning. We don't know how these language models will expand, what capabilities they would have in the future and how accurate they would really be in the future. So there is no clear answer to that. We cannot be entirely sure whether or not ChatGPT or any other language model or any other artificial intelligence tool would replace programmers or not. But I think this discussion is also very irrelevant because the only skill that would always remain is that of problem solving. And if you are able to leverage these tools to solve problems for yourself in a quick way, in, a, in an efficient way, then you'd actually be leveraging these tools and improving yourself, improving your skills and becoming more and more fast. The amount of programming that you will, you will be probably doing will reduce to a certain extent, maybe five to 10 years from now. But if you have the right critical thinking ability, the right way to approach problems, asking these language models the right questions so that they actually help you solve these problems quickly and more efficiently. I think this question should not bother you that much. And second of all, we have seen that ChatGPT is not entirely accurate. We saw that a lot of YouTube links and a lot of links to resources it gave were actually invalid and it just generated it because it's a large language model which is capable of generating text which seems like it's very real, which seems convincing enough but might not be totally accurate at least for now we don't know the future but at least the large language models that we have right now are not entirely accurate they're not bad and they have their utility as we have talked about but they're not absolutely accurate and a lot of times if you don't give it the right prompts it also gives you very generic answers to specific problems and for this someone with an experience in industry can give you 
more specific problem in terms of the tools, in terms of the frameworks, in terms of the technology that is used, in terms of how to actually do things in a step-by-step -step manner and that is where the large language models would not probably give you a very reasonable response. And the last point is that ChatGPT is actually a tool and I've also talked about this slightly. Uh, the fact is that calculators, computers, machine learning, all of these things are tools and if you can just learn how to leverage these tools to achieve your particular goals to solve the problems that you are particularly tackling in that way you would probably not be worrying too much about whether or not you should focus too much on programming because programming as a skill will increase your critical thinking logical thinking and also lateral thinking ability and that is why if you learn programming and even if programming becomes obsolete or or the requirement of programming skill diminishes to a certain extent, it would not harm you at all. So one quick point that I want to mention is that you have to be a bit careful in terms of what kind of data you're actually feeding to chat GPT because it would actually store the data, it would use the data to train the model further. So you don't want to share any confidential data from a company that you're working in. So this is something very important to keep in mind. Do not share confidential information from the company or from any of the research projects that you might be working on. And lastly, if you're looking for a more human generated course that would actually help you become a self-taught robotics, computer vision or machine learning engineer, I'm actually planning on creating a course called Become a Self-Taught Robotics CV or ML Engineer, where I've covered several different modules ranging from defining your niche addressing learning challenges, finding accountability partners, and also technical topics such as building the mathematical foundation for robotics, learning ROS, learning Python programming, learning some software tools, software frameworks, learning Git, how to define projects based on your own curiosity, how to define and do several different projects in different subdomains so that you have a broad understanding of robotics and AI. What are the different subfields in robotics and AI? And also, what kind of projects to do when you, when you have identified a niche for yourself, your subdomain of interest in which you want to work professionally in the future. So it could be computer vision and then I'd also help you find a series of projects that you can do to become a professional computer vision engineer. I'd also help you prepare for interviews there and also be giving you tips on how to read research papers, finding the right learning resources, how to keep yourself updated to robotics and AI and a lot of different things. So this is if this is something that is interesting to you, make sure to join the waiting list. For now, I just have a waiting list and you can click on the link in the description or in the comments and you'd be able to find this particular link if this particular if this course is of interest to you